Stella here lives in a tub right now, but she is being upgraded today to a brand new PVC enclosure with a whole bunch of new stuff. How is she going to react to it? Is it going to freak her out? Is she going to love it? Will she even notice the difference? Let's find out. Welcome to the green room. I'm Bob Bledsoe. Behind the camera is my brother Kent. I better not have to help you build that cage. I think it comes pre-assembled, Kent. Okay, I'll, I'll stay at work then. Stella is my yearling super dwarf reticulated python. She's 100% Kalatoa locality and she's been with me for about six months, just under six months. And she's been in the tub that I put her in for quarantine this whole time. She's got a couple of hides that she rarely uses. She's got a couple of water dishes that she can drink out of or swim in. There's a pile of barrel staves there where she can play Jenga if she wants and uh, just a fake plant and that kind of rotates in and out of there occasionally. Most of the time though, when I'm home, Stella lives here, somewhere on this ladder, usually at the top sleeping on it. And I doubt that that's gonna change much, but her primary residence is completely changing. This new enclosure comes courtesy of Black Box Cages, and you've heard me talk about Black Box before. I'm proud to say that they are now a sponsor of this channel. With regard to video sponsorships and, ch and channel sponsorships, stuff like that, I only want to work with companies that I know are, are good and, and companies that I've tried before. And Black Box is a company that I've bought from. Echo is in a black box cage. I've talked about their cages and their accessories before they were even a channel sponsor. This video will kind of serve as a review of the cage also, but full disclosure, I already have this same cage and there's a couple of modifications to Stella's, but it's basically the same thing and I already know that I like it. So it's not gonna be one of those reviews where I pull it out of the box and go, oh my gosh, they don't put doors on these things? The snake's gonna get out, this is terrible. So, you know, it's gonna, I'm gonna review the thing. We're, we'll, we'll see if I can find anything negative about it, but I, I already love the enclosure, so. Oh, don't fall. Why are you, can you please just hang on to me like a tree? Thanks. Hey guys, Future Bob here. I wanna say that I'm not getting paid by Black Box to make this video. They are providing the green room with enclosures, but I don't get any monetary compensation from them and I don't get commission off of Black Box enclosure sales, even though there is a discount code for you if you watch till the end. I'm shooting this waiting for the enclosure to be delivered right now. This is a 36 by 18 by 18 enclosure, so it's certainly not her forever enclosure. She'll be in it for a little while and she'll eventually grow out of it as Echo will grow out of hers as well. Uh, but those enclosures are the perfect size to fit right in this little corner space right here underneath the bioactive vivarium. And that's gonna come up a little bit. I'm, I'm not doing that today, but eventually that's, that's what's gonna happen. They're gonna fit in there. And then those enclosures will just sort of rotate through juvenile snakes that, that are of size to, to be kept in those. So I don't know how long Echo and Stella will stay in theirs. It's kind of going to depend on their, their behaviors. Echo does well in hers right now, and I think Stella will also, uh, but they'll be upgraded when they, when they next need the upgrade. And their next upgrade will be their forever enclosure, I think. There you go. Oh, you're just going to go as slow as possible. Can I help your tail? There we go. You're on it. Hey guys, me again. So as we go through this video, you're going to hear me narrating from behind my phone, holding my phone. It might be a little bit shaky. The audio might not be great. Sometimes I'll narrate from sitting on the couch right here. I'm just saying this because Kent wants everyone to know that if he was in charge of this shoot, the quality of video and audio would be at least as good as a VHS cassette tape from 1988. Oh my gosh. Thank you for not using packing peanuts. That is super appreciated. It looks like a stormtrooper. Here are the two differences between this one and Echo's. Echo's has locks, and I ordered them this way, not realizing that I shouldn't have, because I don't have little kids that are gonna come in here. So I'm always unlocking these and locking them back, and the key always drops. The ones without locks, you don't need them unless you have little kids, because they have these little tabs, and you get a knob it just opens the door, which is cool. The other thing is Echo has an LED light right there that just, that just you know, light on for 12 hours. This one has a UV light. So here's a couple problems that I've run into so far. Number one, I had planned on putting a medium sky hide in this, like I have in Echo's, it's a, it's a medium hide box up here, but this, this UV, Arcadia UV lamp requires a cage around it and the cage takes up too much room. So I can't put the sky hide up there, at least a medium one won't work. 
So uh, I'll probably do a Mag Naturals ledge or something like that. And then the other thing is, this perch, uh, this is from, from uh, Specialty Enclosure Designs, makes these perches. And I ordered one that's exactly the same length as Echo's. The problem is that the little attachments that you, that you hang them on, that you screw into the side and hang them on, are a different style now and it makes it so that that perch needs to be about an inch longer to fit. But that's okay, we're, we're getting the rest of this thing set up. So this is the probe to my thermostat. I'm just taping it in place right now so that I can hot glue it right here to the, to the wall. Look, I'm in the cage. I'm just soaking up some UVs. This hot glue is not hot enough to melt the cord, but it's gluey enough to keep it on there. A couple accessories you can order with your black box cage is this hide for one thing. They have several sizes of these and they're really heavy duty. They're made out of the same PVC that the enclosure is made out of. And the shelving too, you can order in different heights and uh, widths, which is really great. It gives the snake just some extra um, square footage basically and some height to get up to. So the idea here was to set this up with a number of choices for her. And I don't think she's gonna use hides, but I've got this hide for her, just in case. I also did a humid hide, cause who knows? She hasn't used them in the past, but in a new environment, she could do something totally different. And then I gave her her Jenga pile because I think she'd be really upset if she couldn't play Jenga in here. And I gave her this thing that is new, but it hangs from the ceiling and it's her sort of new favorite thing. It's what she hangs out in all the time. So I thought if she could have that in her enclosure for a while, that'd be cool. Hey, at this point, I think we should find out what's happening in Kent's corner. I don't even know why we're using a cage. I mean, welcome to Kent's corner. I don't even know why we're using a cage because he has those snakes out roaming around all the time anyway. They all have scoped out the place and they know the best spots to strike from. All he's doing by adding cages is providing new places for them to hide behind as they wait to do their murder strikes. Thank you for watching Kent's Corner. Dang it. Really important safety information. Thanks, Kent. Okay, let's hit this Patreon scroll real quick. I want to thank the horde of keepers here who are instrumental in keeping this channel going. That has become a really cool community over on Patreon and I love seeing new people. Miss Hall here is the start of a new board. These guys have a second board started as well, which is really cool. This is becoming a full on horde, you guys. I mean, thanks so much to those Patreon supporters. And final board, we've got black box cages because channel sponsors should have, you know, their own board. I drew that, you guys. Okay, let's just get to introducing Stella to her new digs. She's a really curious snake, and basically she's just going to cruise all over the place very slowly and check out every single thing possible. Obviously, from her perspective, this is just something for her to climb around on. She doesn't, you know, realize that this is her new home. Eventually, the door will be closed, and then she'll just be in there. <laughs> but... Uh, for now, she's just going to check everything out, and she seems happy to do so. she I don't expect her to use hides, but she did check out that hide. She went in and then right back out. That white bit is her water dish. You can't really tell. And her humid hide. She's even checking out her humid hide, which I think is cool. Day one, four o'clock in the morning, she has settled down in her little basket, which I kind of expected. Four hours later, it's eight o'clock in the morning and she is still here. This makes sense because she spent most of the night cruising around, kind of making a mess of the place. And now she, you know, she chose to settle down at some point last night and she chose a thing that she's already comfortable with. So we'll see how long she stays in here. It is 1.30 p.m. now and her behavior in here today versus her normal behavior in her tub is that normally when I'm out and the lights are on, she's moving around her tub looking to come out. And I bring her out and put her on the, the ladder and she finds a spot to curl up and sleep. So here today, she has found a spot to curl up and sleep and she seems content. Uh, this is still just day one. She hasn't even been in here 24 hours yet. Four o'clock in the afternoon now, finally coming out of that basket. It's really difficult to secretly record a reticulated python.
Okay, night two. She is settled on her shelf now. She was up moving around for probably five hours, starting at about 4 p.m. And she came out and hung out with me for a little bit because I assume it's because she thinks I'm awesome. And uh, now she's settled on her shelf and has left her little basket tray thing alone for now. Second morning, she's back in her basket. She moved off her shelf at some point last night into the basket. She's awake right now. I just saw her move her head, so she knows that I'm right here. And normally she'd be coming right out onto my arm to come out and get in her tree. But she seems really content in here. That's cool. Fair warning, you guys. There are a lot of shots in this video of Stella on her basket. You know how everybody sort of wishes that when they lay in bed, they could just reach everything that they could possibly need from their bed? I'm realizing that's the advantage of being a snake. It's 5 p.m. now, and Stella, probably about 15, 20 minutes ago, crawled off of her basket. I mean, now she's back on sitting on it, but she's, uh, she's just exploring her environment again. She's been curled up all day on the basket, and the UV light was on for most of the day, and now it's off. And it's time for her to be up and moving around. She's finally noticing me here. Hi. Hi there, young lady. You want to come out? Stella's in the basket outside of her enclosure now because I forgot to do something. This radiant heat panel, I forgot that these things will put off an odor when they're brand new, whether you buy it in already installed in a cage or you buy one and install it yourself, they'll give off an odor. So what you need to do is just let them burn off. So I've had the doors open in the enclosure for the last few hours, and I think the smell is pretty much gone at this point, but I didn't want to have those fumes in here with with her in there. She's already been in there with it for a while, but uh, I wanted to just get rid of it once and for all. So that's what I did. You just, you just let it go. It's probably at, I think it's at 150 degrees or something on the pan. Yeah. One. Yeah. somewhere around there. 156. And uh, you just let it burn off for a few hours and then the odor will go away. If you get nothing else from this video, Here's a double speed clip of a reticulated python curling up in a basket to go to sleep. With the greatest orange eyes ever. Look at those eyes. Those are orange and black eyes. She's like Halloween. She's a cobra. She's practicing being a cobra. She's really good at it. She's about to catch me looking at her. She always catches me. busted. So I'm hoping that I can get her to just follow the target and not strike at it. Good girl. Oh, <laughs> she, st <laughs> she struck it just the wrong time. Come on. Don't strike. Don't strike. Come here. There you go. There you go. Right in her water. She is digesting her meal under her heat panel, which is perfect. Good job, Stella. All right, she's super active right now. I don't know what day we're on, but I'm going to open her cage here, and we'll see when she, I think when she realizes that the cage is open, she's probably going to want to come out onto my arm. She doesn't. She's not in food mode, so I'm not worried about her like striking at me or anything. Hi. Hi, are you being active? Huh? Are you all over the place? What do you think? You don't want to come out? Or you do? I bet you do. I bet you do want to come out. I'm going to let you do it on your own, though. How about that?
So I shot this video over six days and it's gonna take a snake longer than that to adjust to a new enclosure. But I will say that with Stella, she didn't take much adjustment at all. You know, putting that basket in there, I think was a really good idea because she spent most of the time in that basket. And that's why we're doing this video as a six day video instead of seven, because tomorrow she's just gonna be in that basket again. <laughs> so, and how much basket footage do, do we need, right? So uh, I would say that she is just fine in that cage. She has slept more in her enclosure than she normally does. Normally in the tub, she would be up and about and, and wanting to get out. And when I put her on, the, on her ladder, she'd fall asleep, uh, which, is, which is what happened here too. I, I put her on her ladder a couple of times and she would cruise around a little bit, but then fall asleep in the spots that she's used to falling asleep on the ladder. So that's not changing. Her demeanor didn't really change at all. She seems like she's happy exploring the cage when she's when she's awake, and she is content sleeping in her little basket in there uh, when it's time to sleep. As you guys know, I love the black box cage. It's the quality is fantastic. The accessories that they make are awesome. The options that you get, uh, I highly recommend them. And uh, you know that I recommended them even before they were sponsors. So. It's a real recommendation. What I really like about black box cages is they keep their margins low. So they're less expensive than a lot of other comparable uh, cages that you'll find. And they also don't have crazy lead times. So check them out, blackboxcages.com. You can enter the promo code GRP for 5% off your order. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next week. <laughs>